to have you. Very well. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time today. Uh, first of all, congratulations for your uh, awards. I think you are flowing up with all these awards this year. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got with, uh, what is this? Jim Rob. Jill, Jill, Rob, Jill uh, Rob Leadership Award. Leadership Award and also. Um, uh, no, I, I don't know. That's what our team and us, we were discussing that it's just been such a nice end to the year mm. uh, because on Sunday we got uh, the uh, most popular Indian film festival abroad, abroad, which was given by the Telangana government and government of India, Make in India initiative. Mm -hmm. And uh, that we won in Hyderabad. Then on Wednesday, uh, for the first time, the Australian Film Academy um, actor awards they had the inaugural best Asian film so uh, Dangal which is a film that we distributed in Australia and New Zealand and are very proud of mm -hmm. that film won um, and then on Thursday we got the Jill Robb leadership screen leadership award mm -hmm. um, and I was really thrilled because uh, I'm the first Indian to get it so um, I felt very proud not only for myself and the company but also for our community and all the amazing work that all of us are doing you know so it was a very um, sentimental moment what do you think what kind of efforts of your efforts all these years in australia uh, bought these kind of awards at this point of time um i don't know i think uh, i think when one is working you're not really thinking about awards or rewards you're just working and trying to do the best that you can um uh, so i don't really know what it is that has brought this about but yes we all do work very hard mm -hmm. i mean everyone works hard and mm -hmm. uh, um, my i have the best team in the world who work equally hard if mm -hmm. not harder and um, i think we have been very true to what we have been trying to do um, which is bringing people together um, you know using uh, films arts as a cultural bridge between communities um, giving out uh, showcasing young upcoming filmmakers um, showcasing young upcoming dancers yeah. through our film festivals and basically um, trying to be a platform for good films um, also showcasing the best of Indian cinema through our film festival and also through our general releases in Australia New Zealand and now Fiji we I think it's been really go good because you know films they are like the biggest glue that yeah. keep us all together so I think for us it's just been something that we all love doing yeah so before okay discussing of anything I want to know who is me to before coming to Australia <laughs> back in India so what is your background like I heard like your your background is from you know uh, you worked in several TV channels back in India and all so yes. can you please explain a bit more uh, so my background is a uh, 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 filmmaking mm -hmm. um, so I uh, studied in uh, Hindu College at Delhi University and um, in fact Imtiaz Ali was my classmate and he and oh. me both were toppers in first year so we <laughs> still each other, call each other topper mm -hmm. um, and then after that I went into film school in Bombay and that was really good because when we were interning in film school suddenly the skies opened and from having one and a half Doordarshan and Doordarshan Metro channels we had 52 channels so it was a great uh, time for yeah, young filmmakers like me because um, it wasn't as commercial the, the uh, television industry in India because mm. uh, it wasn't everyone was not chasing TRPs and ratings um, we had a lot of freedom that if you had a good idea we could just walk to our uh, programming head and say I want to do this is the budget and we would do that and I uh, directed a number of travel shows um, and I directed a documentary which was about the impact of violence on the children in Kashmir which uh, UNICEF then picked up and sent as their uh, uh, um, official entry for the Emmy Awards and it did a lot of festival run so I think it was a really like the golden age for yeah. all of us because um, we were just uh, driven by the purity of creativity and purity of an idea rather than uh, analyzing what will work what will not work because it was a new uh, canvas yeah. blank canvas right. um, 
so that was really good then i got married to a new zealander uh, and who oddly enough was in india mm. and uh, that's where we had met and you know that's what they say never say never because right through the time that we were dating i was always like i'll never leave india and <laughs> but then we got married and uh, he got a really good job offer here so we moved to melbourne mm. and uh, i have to say melbourne has been really good to me um it's given us lots of opportunities and um i've also worked very hard but it's been it's give you know like they say the harder you work the luckier you get so okay. it's a bit like that and uh but it's been a very good city because it's really embraced everything that we have tried to do given us more opportunities um and uh, then we started the distribution business and when we started um, uh, distributing films like the first thing that i think most immigrants when they get here is like where are the hindi films playing right. and at that time um uh, this is 2002 when we got here uh, the films were screening at chinatown or in community halls mm. and um, um uh, when you enter there would be two bas- uh, boxes one box with card one cardboard box full of samosas one cardboard box where you put in cash money <laughs> and the ticket price was dr- totally random it would be like uh, 20 bucks 25 dollars for a big film cheaper t- um, ticket price for a smaller Small. film um i still remember one of the first films that we saw here the film wouldn't start till mm. the whole hall was full mm. you know it was like those buses in indian villages where till the bus is not full the bus doesn't go right. so um and then when i uh, met mr yash chopra who i had known uh, throughout my mm-hmm. working life he kind of suggested to me that uh, why don't you start distribution in australia and new zealand because it's very underrepresented and we don't we don't get any box office returns um and if someone does it well uh, we think there is scope and uh, business and uh, is uh, finance is not my background at all mm. so i was a bit reluctant but they all yashra yashji himself and yashra studios they really guided me step by step how do you position a film how do you market a film how do you showcase it how do you uh, talk to the cinemas and i think you know when you are uh, when you just blindly follow instructions um and without putting your own mind or anything sometimes it works because you are just doing what you're being told and um i won't lie that was pretty much how it all started yeah. um and the good thing is that we found like minded partners who came on board and i feel very proud that now we have managed to integrate hindi cinema into the mainstream cinemas like any time you go to hoyts village even cinemas you'll definitely find a hindi punjabi marathi gujarati film screening mm-hmm. and that is um, all happened and changed in a very short span of time so that's something that we are very very proud of and then we also line produced uh, a few films like salam namaste yeah. which was the first uh, indian film to be shot completely abroad um, chak de india right. may or mrs khanna so it's been a very exciting um, and interesting journey yeah so when you started this without your intervention like you know a good kind of support is background support is there from yashras uh, as chopra and all so after starting here did you ever faced any challenges uh, with respect to you know distribution dealing with the people because distribution is a kind of a very you know uh, tough job you can say being a lady in order to take you know work, work on with the people and all so did you ever faced any challenges and what kind of challenges you faced uh, uh, they uh, i think every job has a lot of challenges every job has its own unique challenges mm-hmm. and distribution is no different it is a very volatile business because no one can accurately predict exactly. how a film will do if you all knew what works we would all be making films that Good works films. you know <laughs> so uh, uh, so the unpredictability Uh, the unpredictable nature of the business is uh, scary and also exciting right. um but having said that uh, y- the challenges were especially when we started was mostly educating people because at that time like for example um we for classification which is censorship all, all the indian films had to be classified we know what a huge reaging process it is in our <laughs> office because every time it comes very last minute and right. somehow we managed to get it rated and sent to the cinemas so 
small small things like that you know which which now classification now the government bodies also know that okay um, these things are very last minute so they are also a bit more aware and a bit more flexible with us so i think smaller things the same with the cinemas you know it's just um the indian film industry is still uh, quite chaotic sometimes so right. i think it's uh, and australian uh, industries are super organized so i think it's just balancing the Excellent. two extreme uh, work habits right so we know that you know you, you have started uh, mind blowing films uh, back in it's been uh, how many 2009. years 2009 yes. it's been 8 years yes so after that uh, you started why if iff film yes. indian film festival uh, at this point of time it is one of the biggest um, film festivals abroad also you have received the award as well what made you to start this um, film festival um uh, you know when i married to a new zealander mm. uh, who loves indian films and anything indian and uh, what i used to find interesting is that whenever we used to go to watch films uh, we would always see people like him who have come with their um, indian partners mm. or um indian um, friends you know and um, one day we just thought that it would be so good if we had uh, just a few films that yeah. were targeted towards non indians that's how the whole idea came about and we thought okay let's do a film festival and the very first one that uh, we did was called beginners guide to bollywood mm -hmm. and um, and we just that was the first very small just a few films mostly targeted to non indians um and then as we started working on it we saw there's so many independent films that don't get a general release in australia right. and uh, new zealand and we thought that why don't we do a proper proper film festival and you know get um, in really the best of independent films regional films and um start showcasing them and as we started doing it sponsors started coming on board and then government came on board so it just in some way took a life of its own you know right. and um what we kept doing is we were very committed to growing it so with every new partner every new sponsor we made sure we were adding more events and elements and i truly believe that you know in this day and age of illegal downloads it's very hard to have a uh film festival which is only screening films you know right. um uh, it's not a very sustainable model which is the reason why we try to make it very interactive with master classes q and a's dance competition short film competition awards night so that it's so vibrant and so rich and it has um, so many elements mm -hmm. that it attracts everyone there is something for everyone by the time when you started this um there are no other film festivals here i think is it and uh, not that i'm aware of yeah because yeah, the the way you project it you know the the festival mode you created now it's a very a very big event in uh, melbourne which is uh, recognized by across the world as well before uh, before starting this kind of iffm uh, like you know film festivals what kind of thought process you felt film festival and you know distribution is uh, integration of both you know how did you make effective how did you made it effective that you know everyone comes to a theater and watch did, did you ever face any challenges with the piracy because we face piracy is a living constant nightmare hmm. not only for the film distributors or festival directors but for everyone who is Uh, remotely related to the arts uh, remotely related to filmmaking and also whether we realize it or not it's also affects pretty much everyone because um uh, a lot of piracy the money that comes for piracy funds terrorism it funds um, a lot of um, mafia so th there is a lot of dark elements attached to piracy which we probably don't even think about oh. you know so that's why um uh, it's a constant challenge not only for a very small distributor like me mm. but pretty much for everyone but what kind of uh, precautions we are taking uh, in how can what kind of support uh, that uh, you are getting from the australian government is Nothing. is it not uh, I don't think it's on anyone's radar to be honest you know mm. like um I just feel that if, you know when you see everyone is doing it after some time that becomes very legitimate it becomes very normal because everybody is doing it and you are stupid if you're spending money and watching a film even though it's completely wrong everybody has those set top boxes in their house the next ve the very next day our films are the 
releasing the very next day the film is there on mm. the set top boxes yeah. um, the owners of these uh, so called set top boxes uh, are proudly uh, being endorsed by community media community papers uh, they are sponsoring other film events which i find very laughable considering they're stealing from those films so i'm not really sure uh, what the solution is it is a very very sad state of affairs but um, i'm also not sure what the solution is because until and unless government uh, makes a very conscious decision to shut it down uh, telecom companies make a conscious decision because at the end of the day they are the ones who are um, uh, providing the internet services so right. somewhere the onus has to be on them also right. um it's like if a uh, if a man is carrying drugs in a flight somewhere that airline also has to take some responsibility you right. know it cannot be like we don't know what this man is carrying you know so i feel that it's a joint effort and everybody needs to pitch in and until and unless that happens um, that's a nightmare everybody has to live with do you think like uh, what are the communities which are like, actually encouraging this kind of uh, promoters or whoever are they are not aware of all these things they just came in and you know they asked I don't know whether they are aware or mm. not but they definitely don't care don't care yeah. you know so and uh, um, um, the irony is that most of them come to me and say oh very bad what is happening this that and all and the next day i see them advertising promoting you know inviting them as uh, chief guests so i have a real problem with that so i stay away from all those people and uh, unfortunately i can't change them um and this is not something where one should even need to be changed yeah. you know right. if someone stealing they are stealing yeah you can't uh, whitewash that exactly. in any other way exactly so coming to your personal things like there is a lot of entertainment in the world so you are in the entertainment industry uh what kind of entertainment you uh, personally like so in your uh, what what are your hobbies okay um am i i actually didn't have got no time for hobbies i used to love doing pottery once upon a time <laughs> uh but i do uh, read a lot and okay. i watch uh, a lot of movies and tv shows and um every evening i have to watch something before i go to sleep and read something before i go to sleep which is why I'm sometimes up up till 2 3 in the morning but um uh those are the few things that i do all the time and uh, i can watch any film mm. good bad rubbish amazing greek italian hindi bhojpuri anything i can sit and watch happily so um i won't say i'm a very discerning selective audience because mm. i'm exact opposite because i watch everything mm. um but uh, that's the one thing i really really love and okay. i love watching films in a movie hall where it's dark you're sitting with a bunch of strangers everybody's watching the same thing and feeling the same thing i think there's something quite magical about that so um th- that would be top of my fun things to do watching movie watching movies it's very <laughs> boring i know but yeah do you, do you also write any stories or because being a, when you work in tv channels you are the producer and director like right? yes, yes so do you also write any stories or something? i used to mm. uh, right now i only write emails for some reason <laughs> <laughs> that's been the extent of writing yeah. but um, uh, to be honest with you sadly no, no um no. not for anything else but lack of time yeah you know now i have a little daughter so between trying to be a mom running a business and uh, getting things done i end up pretty much having no time to myself but i do enjoy watching movies and reading scripts reading books reading facebook reading anything <laughs> you know so, so yeah so uh, with uh, i think salam namaste and couple of movies which you are talking about so you produced uh, in australia so you were yes i was the line producer, line producer for salam namaste so yashraj was the producer hmm. and i was the line producer but we also produced a beautiful documentary uh, last year which is called raising the bar hmm. uh, which is about um, uh, a group of children and young adults with down syndrome who go to india hmm. and uh, for the world uh, down syndrome day and over there they meet their indian counterparts and what we have done is we follow the stories of three such um, children and young adults with down syndrome in australia and three in india okay. so it, it you know it follows the great love that the parents have the challenges the prejudices but most of all it really captures the human spirit you know so it's a story of human spirit and it's a very small but very uplifting documentary very good so are you also planning any further films uh 
films in future? So we have a script uh, which is in script development mm -hmm. um, and we are hoping to uh, be able to announce that sometime end of the year, end of next year mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and um, we have one more documentary idea that we want to do. You know, so I'm hoping that one day um, when our festival is bigger and a bit more robust, uh, we can help uh, the short film competition winners uh, script and plan their own films, if a uh, short film, documentary, feature film, something. So that would be the next um, dream for the film festival. Good, good. Hope so. It will fall in place. I hope so too. <laughs> So, uh, from Australia, so as you are telling now, you want to promote uh, uh, the p people who are in Australia and you know, want to produce some films and all. What more from the entertainment part you want to you want to take to the world from Australia? Because Australia is the best place, livable city in the world. Melbourne is the best livable city. Your IFFM is one of the part <laughs> in Melbourne. What you want to showcase to the world from Australia, being in the you know multicultural festival and into entertainment industry world you are in um i i would uh, you know i feel australian writing is very strong okay. like if you look at all the all the australian tv shows and uh, most of the films the writing is very strong mm. so uh, what would really interest me is a lot of and the humor the australian humor is very quirky and dry and it's very unique to australians so i would love to do some mul australian multicultural comedies okay. that are set uh, but I, I am, uh, if I read one more uh, cross-culture love story, My Bollywood Bride, Kan Kari Love or any such films, I'm going to stab myself. But um, something that's a bit more original, a bit more, um, uh, a bit more real, real, you know, but at the same time has the slice of life that we all uh, are a part of. Right. So now... Uh, what is the percentage of the viewability uh, audience are coming to theatres and watching? Because you you know the exact number and figure how it is going. I know that you are talking about the piracy which is actually affecting more of, uh, not only in Australia, I think everywhere it is affecting. Yes. With respect to Australia, you have a very good number. Definitely you know what kind of, yes. what, what is the, how the people are watching and what what is you know making them interesting part and all? Yes. I think uh, like anywhere else in the world, good films, big films, um, good stories, small films are all working well at the box office. Um, and um, Dangal was the highest grossing um, uh, Indian foreign film actually mm. uh, uh, this year. Mm. And uh, it took uh, 2.6 million at the Australian box office, which yep. is a huge number. And um, so I feel that if a story is strong and human, uh, it does resonate and people right. keep coming back. And the other good thing is our films have a lot of music, strong music, which also gives it a lot of repeat value where people want to come back and watch it on the big screen and, uh, you know, enjoy it and make it a family experience. So, um, uh, the good thing is that as far as percentage is concerned, I would say almost 60% of the diaspora is going and watching films in theatre, buying tickets and watching films theatre. Um, I mean, obviously, I wish it was more, yeah. and also I wish that uh, everybody didn't uh, watch it on their uh, set-top boxes and so on. Yeah. But um, having said that, I think the true blue film lovers are still uh, going and watching films, and also it's become very easy now that uh, everywhere we live, we screen pretty much everywhere. So it's very unlikely that uh, unless you're staying in the moon, that you won't have a cinema near you that is screening um, Indian films. Right. Okay. With respect to uh, IFFM and mind-blowing films, what are your future plans, G? So, what do you want to and where do you want to take this? Um, um, with festival, like I said, we would like to start uh, being able to support um, upcoming filmmakers to make their projects mm. uh, but I think we are a few couple of years away from that but mm. hopefully um, the big dream is that people who win the short film competition right now they win a trip to India and an opportunity to meet the studio heads and I'm very proud of some of our uh, winners like one of them is um, 
with YouTube and uh -huh. uh, at a very creative level. Another one is uh, um, one of the chief assistants at Yashraj Films. He was the assistant, um, chief assistant director on Sultan. He's one of the chief assistant directors in Tigers in the Hair. Um, there, are, uh, there are a couple whose scripts are in script development with Film Victoria. So I'm very proud of all our winners. Uh, but I would personally uh, be very happy if one day we can also contribute um, in helping them put their dream projects together, uh, whether by being some kind of a creative producer or consultant or raising some money for them or even giving some money to them which helps them um, that one step closer to making their film. So that I think would be a really amazing step. We also, the festival also has a charity initiative which is Educate the Educators oh. where um, we've tied up with La Trobe University uh, who's been our partner right from the start and we they send uh, some of their um, PhD students and um, professors to work um, in schools in Delhi um, about how to make education more inclusive. Okay. So I'm hoping we can grow that a bit more so that uh, the festival also have a strong socially conscious core um, and it's doing something uh, which kind of makes our relationship and bridge with India even stronger. So I'm hoping we can focus on these two elements and make it grow plus of course have more films, better films, better guests, mm -hmm. more events, more fun, uh, more uh, color and excitement. Uh, but these two would be the two things that I would really like to nurture and grow. Very good. So it's definitely it's actually increasing and you know, um, you're in fact um, from Australia, you're encouraging the talent. Yes, yes. It helps the yes. government also. So at the same time, what are your, now IFFM has received a good award uh, with respect to, you know, uh, across the nation and on the abroad uh, Indian film festivals. I think your responsibility has increased much more, <laughs> isn't it? So what are your plans like, you know, for further further uh, coming uh, film festivals, what are your plans to make it much more, uh, you know, set the standards and how are you going to make it? Uh, we actually just started uh, discussing as to what more can we do, how can we make it more uh, um, exciting and interesting. So obviously uh, films play a big part because right. it is a film festival and we already started uh, talking for some of the big films that are due next year. Then we also are talking to some really prolific guests, uh, not only from Bombay but also from uh, Southern India, Northern India um, uh, to come for the festival. Um, as you know the flag hoisting has been a huge success and very this sentimental. Yeah. So um, we are now trying to figure out how can we make that more special, what more can we do. and. Um, and of course um, our competitions as to how can we add more value to it. So basically we are not uh, uh, touching the structure of the yeah. events and the festival but we are um, just having this discussion as to how can we make it uh, stronger and Good. better. Yeah. So uh, hopefully by August you'll get to see <laughs> what we do. Yeah, any extra add-ons? Uh, not at the moment that we are planning to, but uh, uh, we like this year we screened at five um, centers around Melbourne outside our events and awards outside Federation Square and yeah, Recital right. Center. So we were at uh, High Point, we were at uh, Northland, Chatston, um, uh, Hoyts Melbourne Central. Uh, so we are just figuring out how do we uh, diversify further okay. and make those. Uh, um, those centers stronger. So that's what we are going to focus a bit more on. Okay. So if I ask you what is the success secret behind um, your business, what do you say? Um, I don't know what is the secret, but it's definitely, uh, we are a great team and we all work very hard. We take full ownership of what we do. Um, we take full responsibility for what we do and we just try to do the best that we can. So I don't think there is any other secret to it <laughs> except that we really try. Okay. So if I, if I ask you about your family, uh, can you tell us about your family? So I have a very uh, sweet loving husband who is uh, a New Zealander but more Indian than 
um, I think all of us sometimes. All he your speaks films Hindi. made him like. Yeah, he <laughs> speaks in Hindi. He loves Indian food, and uh, he's traveled more of India than even I have, um, and that too by train everywhere. So he's um, a real India lover, mm -hmm. and I have a four-year-old daughter. Uh, whose uh, name is Parina, meaning angel. Um, she's obviously the love of our life, and uh, and I have our mind going films, our other <laughs> child. So that's pretty much it. I'm quite boring. If I ask you, what is your cherishable moment in your life that you feel felt very happy, and also any any kind of um, uh, what is the moment that you felt very sad? Okay, this would not have happened. Mm. Can you like, tell us both? So, but, um, cherishable moments, of course, um, has been the first and foremost has been the birth of my daughter. Uh, that was a very beautiful moment, and uh, um, it was just uh, like all mothers feel. It was just very special and memorable. And uh, then, of course, was uh, um, when Mr. Bachchan came. Mm. That was another amazing moment, and I still remember. Um, that was the, also the year that we launched IFM Awards okay. and uh, we were at Princess Theatre and he took a giant selfie with all the audience and I just looked up and it was packed. The, the energy was just magic. Mm. You know, there was just so much love and exuberance um, and happiness. Yeah. Um, so I just felt very good, you know, at that uh, moment just looking up. And um, of course when we had the flag hoisting this yeah. year, and um, Ashwarya, because Ashwarya. also she was the first woman, she came with her daughter. Um, so it just felt very special, you know, when, um, um, uh, especially when she hoisted the flag and the um, streamers went off, which um, Aditi from my team did a very good job with the timing, uh, mm -hmm. because it went off at the right time. And um, and it, there was just the tricolor screamer, and especially at Federation Square, being so far from your country, right. it just felt very special. I was very teary that day. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, uh, winning these awards and recognition, um, it has been very, very special. And, and to be recognized in a country which is our new home, um, and being acknowledged for the work that we have done has been very speci special and I feel very grateful for it. It would not have happened. What is the moment? Did you ever face any moment? Um, no, I, I never faced any moment where I felt this shouldn't have happened or any such thing. Um, but I do, sometimes I do feel that, um, I do uh, feel Obviously, whenever you do things, you always feel that we could have done this better. And if we don't feel that, we are not going to grow. So a lot of times we do feel that, okay, this we could have done better, that we could have done better. So things like that, but which I think come with, as we grow, we learn and right. we move on from there. Um, but to be honest with you, if you ask me, do, do we have any big regrets or anything? I really don't. That's very good. <laughs> I think you're a very confident person, which I have said in you. <laughs> mm, as, you s as you're talking about the piracy, uh, which is the biggest problem for any film distributor, filmmaker, what kind of uh, efforts or what kind of plans um, you have or you would like the government or whoever to take any further steps? What do you expect from anyone? What, what do you tell to the people or whoever the people doing doing this kind of stuff? I, um, um, you know, I don't think piracy will ever go away. Uh, but I do get very uh, disappointed and shocked uh, even today to see how open it is and how casual people are. Uh, because at the end of the day, it is still stealing. Mm. You know, however way we want to disguise it. Mm. So I feel that... Um, um, and I feel that I'm hoping that government bodies come on board and they also start becoming, putting a lot of onus on these telecom providers, you know. Mm -hmm. Earlier at least, they were, it was harder to track down because it was so spread out because all the grocery stores used to have uh, pirated DVDs and all. But now it's a lot more streamlined because it's through these set-top boxes which are all working on internet. Thank so you. I just, so it's not impossible to control. I'm not saying stop, but to control. So I feel that I just wish that all the telecom companies and the service providers and 
um, government and these laws are brought in place which can help um, try and curb that a bit you know and also I feel somewhere there has to be more education a bit of self responsibility also where um, um, film lovers if they're calling themselves film lovers are also not going out and supporting piracy and at the same time uh, community media um, is not supporting piracy and people who are um, providing these uh, films illegally yeah I mean I, I still remember when Dangal was released on the very next day and that was the first time we saw the full film up on Facebook groups and Till then, you know, uh, our films were on torrent and this and that, and you felt that there were people we don't know. It mm. was happening in some random country, in some unknown country. We don't know who was uploading the film. But Dangal was, uh, we were very shocked. Like um, Aditi was there, I was there. We had two other girls. We spent the whole Christmas just get blocking sites and. Uh, writing to Disney, Disney blocking sites, us blocking sites and there were all these local groups who were sharing the films. Mm -hmm. People we know, so many of the people who take tickets from us, who come to our festival on our invitation. So that was very shocking to me to see um, that how people don't even bat an eyelid before mm -hmm. doing things like that. Do you think educating people will help this? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. It's going to be a long and difficult and uh, trying road ahead. But yeah. at least we need to start somewhere. Yeah. What are your future plans? How, what movies are coming from Mind Blowing? Films? So uh, we have the, um, we have Tigers in the Hair, okay. which is uh, the sequel to uh, Ekta Tiger, mm -hmm. uh, which we are very excited about, uh, which has uh, Salman Khan and Katrina Kaif mm -hmm. and produced by Yashraj Films, okay. which is coming on 22nd. So that's a big uh, Christmas release. Okay, yes, yeah. 22nd December. And then next month, of course, we have uh, a horror film. Uh, 1921 and we have Ayari and on 26 Jan we have Padman oh. which has got Akshay Kumar which we are very excited about uh, because again it's based on a true story um, and uh, it, the man the story is it's beautiful and very inspiring so um, so we've got a busy slate ahead yeah I know I'm saying that um, all the very best for all your ventures movies and you know for the film festival and once again, congratulations Thank for you your so much. awards and uh, wish you get many more uh, Thank you in the so future. Much. Thank you very much Thank for the you time. So much. Thank you.